This energy source surrounds us, rushing past every day, yet we barely notice it. It flows silently through valleys, cuts through cities, and winds its way past forgotten lands. Unlike solar or wind, it doesn't pause at night or wait for a breeze. It moves with relentless consistency, hour after hour, day after day. Strangely, though, most of this power remains untapped, slipping past our grasp like water through fingers. Why, in a world desperate for clean energy, do we continue to ignore the endless kinetic force flowing through our rivers? The answer reveals a story of technology, ecology, and a radical new idea. The limitations of traditional hydropower. For most people, the word hydropower brings to mind enormous concrete dams holding back vast lakes. These structures, like the Hoover Dam or the Three Gorges, have been the backbone of renewable electricity for decades. Their sheer scale is impressive, and their energy output is undeniable. But building them comes with serious consequences. First, there's geography. Not every landscape can support a dam. You need the right elevation drop, massive amounts of water, and enough space to flood entire valleys. Many of the world's most suitable locations have already been used. The rest, either too small, too flat, or too environmentally sensitive. Then comes the environmental impact. Dams disrupt entire ecosystems. Fish migration patterns collapse. Sediment gets trapped, starving downstream areas of essential nutrients. Floodplains that once supported wildlife and farming vanish beneath reservoirs. Even local communities are often displaced, forced to abandon homes passed down for generations. There's also the issue of cost. Designing, engineering, and constructing these projects can take years, sometimes decades. And maintenance is a constant challenge. Repairs to aging infrastructure cost millions, and when something goes wrong, the fallout affects entire regions. For these reasons, Large-scale hydropower isn't always the solution for future energy needs. We've harvested the easy wins. The untouched potential that remains is often locked behind technical and ecological barriers. This reality has left engineers, scientists, and policymakers looking for smaller, more flexible alternatives. Solutions that don't require reshaping entire landscapes. Something that can work with nature instead of against it. Why rivers are an untapped gold mine. All around the world, rivers keep flowing. Day and night, through heat waves and cold snaps, their water never stops moving. Unlike solar panels that sit idle under cloudy skies or wind turbines waiting for a breeze, rivers offer a constant, predictable stream of energy. It's nature's conveyor belt running 24-7. Yet, when you look at how much of this river energy we use, the number is shockingly low. The main reason? Most rivers don't have the dramatic elevation drops needed for traditional turbines. In energy terms, they're called low head sites. The water doesn't fall from great heights. It just glides along, steady but gentle. For decades, Engineers struggled with how to generate useful power from such slow-moving water. Then there's the environmental factor. Rivers are teeming with life. Fish, insects, and amphibians, all part of delicate ecosystems that turbines with spinning metal blades could easily destroy. Creating barriers or redirecting flows often harms breeding grounds and migration paths. Infrastructure is another barrier. Building channels or small dams, even for low-head projects, means changing the river's shape. That's expensive, time-consuming, and frequently met with public resistance. But perhaps the biggest frustration is how widely distributed these rivers are. Small, scattered streams don't produce enough power for giant utilities to care. Yet, for off-grid communities, farms, or rural schools, Tapping just a fraction of that flow 
could be life-changing. That's where new thinking comes in. Instead of forcing rivers to work for us, what if we built technology that works with them? What if there was a way to pull energy from these flowing waters, quietly, safely, and without the need for massive construction projects? This is where the next chapter in small hydropower begins. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Bladeless Revolution. What makes this turbine different? Imagine a hydro turbine with no blades, no sharp metal edges slicing through fast moving currents. No spinning parts pose a danger to fish or collect tangled debris. Just a smooth, uninterrupted flow of water. And yet, somehow, electricity is being generated from it. This is the heart of a new approach to hydropower. Unlike conventional turbines, which rely on blades spinning against the force of water to drive a generator, this design takes an entirely different path. It works by carefully shaping the movement of the water itself, using fluid dynamics rather than mechanical parts to capture energy. At first glance, the structure seems almost too simple. A hollow chamber with water flowing in one side and out the other. But inside, the real magic happens. The shape and internal design of the chamber guide the water into a swirling high-speed vortex. This focused column of spinning water naturally builds up kinetic energy as it moves. Suspended right in the center of this vortex is a small sphere or hemispherical object. As the vortex strengthens, the rotating water grips the object, causing it to spin rapidly and steadily. That motion is then transferred to a generator, creating electricity. This bladeless design brings two major advantages. First, it's far safer for aquatic life. Fish can pass through without injury. Second, it makes energy harvesting possible in places previously considered unworkable. Shallow streams, slow-moving rivers, and even man-made channels. It's a completely new way of thinking about water and energy. Understanding the physics. How vortex energy extraction works. At the center of this bladeless turbine lies a fascinating natural force, the vortex. You've probably seen one before, maybe as water drains from a sink or when a whirlpool forms in a river. But turning that swirling motion into electricity takes clever engineering. Everything starts with rotation. For a vortex to exist, the water needs an initial spin. Once that happens, physics takes over. As the water spirals inward, it speeds up near the center. This is due to the conservation of angular momentum, the same principle that makes an ice skater spin faster when pulling their arms inward. But here's the challenge. Rivers don't naturally create this spin. Unlike draining a bathtub, there's no central hole pulling water down. The turbine's internal shape solves this by guiding the water into a controlled spiral as it flows through. Flow channels and curves inside the turbine help steer the water just right. Suspended inside this vortex is a small movable object usually shaped like a ball or hemisphere. As the vortex builds, it grips this object and spins it faster and faster. This rotational energy then connects to a generator. What makes this so unique is how gentle and efficient the process is. It doesn't rely on fast blades or high pressure jets, just the simple, continuous motion of water shaped by physics. The unique engineering twist what makes this turbine truly unique isn't just the absence of blades or its use of vortex physics. It's the smart way. It creates and maintains that vortex inside a constantly moving river. Unlike still water in a bathtub, river water flows steadily in one direction, usually without any natural spin. This presented a challenge, how to start and sustain rotation in such conditions. The answer lies in the turbine's internal design, specifically a movable object like a ball or hemisphere. Before power generation even begins, 
this object rests slightly off-center inside the chamber, held there by the force of the flowing water. As the current moves through, tiny fluctuations in the flow nudge the object, causing slight movements. These small, seemingly random shifts are enough to trigger the initial spin needed to form a vortex. Once the vortex strengthens, the object's rotation speeds up, driving a connected generator. Engineers can adjust the size, shape, and placement of this internal element to suit different river speeds and conditions. Some even suggest altering the material or surface texture for better performance. It's a simple, yet highly effective way to turn unpredictable river flow into steady, usable energy. Efficiency, costs, and real-world comparisons. When it comes to energy solutions, performance and cost often dominate the conversation. So, how does this new bladeless hydro turbine compare to more established options like solar panels or traditional hydropower systems? In terms of pure efficiency, it's not breaking records. Classic large-scale hydropower setups, like the Francis and Kaplan turbines, can hit over 90% efficiency. Even many low-head turbines, designed for slower water flows, typically reach around 70 to 75%. This bladeless design, by comparison, currently sits in the 50 to 55% range, depending on site conditions and flow rates. But raw efficiency doesn't tell the whole story. What makes this turbine valuable is its ability to operate where other systems simply can't. Shallow rivers, low gradient streams, and sensitive environmental zones are all places where traditional turbines would be impractical or even harmful. The bladeless design minimizes disruption to fish, wildlife, and natural water flow. Cost is another factor to consider. Right now, installing one of these units costs more upfront than setting up a comparable solar array. Much of that comes down to the technology still being in its early stages and not yet mass-produced. But unlike solar, this turbine runs continuously, day and night, rain or shine, eliminating the need for expensive battery storage. Over time, that steady output could make its overall cost per kilowatt hour quite competitive, especially in off-grid or rural locations where reliability matters more than efficiency charts. More than just an engineering curiosity, this technology represents a way to bring dependable, renewable power to places long overlooked by large energy providers. As the design matures and production scales up, its role in sustainable energy solutions could grow significantly.